Why are OpenStack upgrades so difficult? OpenStack has faced a lot of criticism over the years, a lot of which have been targeted at their upgrades. While the bad reputation of upgrades was warranted in the past, today most problems lie in the users rather than in the infrastructure. However, before we break it down, Let's first dive into its history to get a deeper understanding of why OpenStack upgrades didn't give the community the best first impression. As you may know, OpenStack has developed a history around complex and challenging upgrades. In fact, there was a time when upgrades were a colossal pain, as there were no rolling upgrades, little upgrade testing, and network data plane connectivity loss on agent restarts. However, just as you would expect, Improvements were made regarding OpenStack upgrades with the help of Grenade. To give context, Grenade is a test harness that helps ensure that service projects remain upgradable across releases. It runs on every single commit to those service projects mentioned earlier, and code will not merge if it puts the project at risk of a faulty upgrade. In addition, virtually all deployment tooling, which is consumed by OpenStack tooling, has continuous integration jobs that run on every single commit. As a result, it deploys the previous major version of OpenStack, tests it, runs an upgrade, and then tests it again. Despite the fact that countless major upgrades are carried out each day, code will not go in if there are any breakages. If teams want to continue merging code, they are forced to resolve them as quickly as possible. By using software that is adequately tested for upgrades and deployment tools that check for upgrades, there is no reason to be concerned about software not operating correctly. So now, since OpenStack upgrades have seen major improvements, what can you do from your end to influence the process? Let's take a look at how upgrades can affect you based on several use cases. Rely on commercial drivers. The first group relies on out-of-tree, vendor-specific drivers for things like storage or network. For example, you could be using a commercial SDN offering that lives out-of-tree. As a result, you can't upgrade your cloud until your vendor tests the functions with the new release. If you want to eliminate a possible upgrade blocker, it is recommended that you go with third-party CI. In this case, the vendor can run their CI jobs against every single commit of OpenStack, ensuring that failures are caught instantly, catching them before the release of OpenStack. Therefore, they can release their plugins at the same time as OpenStack. Fork OpenStack The process can also be complicated for those who fork OpenStack and maintain local patches. While it is understandable to need specific customizations in OpenStack, there have been one too many instances of individuals trying to accomplish what already exists within OpenStack. After all, OpenStack has been around for a while, servicing a variety of operators, such as public cloud, enterprise, finance, government, and carriers, to name a few. Therefore, it is very unlikely that your use case isn't compatible with OpenStack. As a result, it is highly recommended to consider your use case and determine a few different alternatives before forking an OpenStack project. Because once you fork the code and start maintaining your patches, the amount of work involved escalates from deploying OpenStack to developing OpenStack, which is a pretty significant leap. Additionally, keep in mind that OpenStack is focused on the four opens, which include open source, open design, open development, and open community. In other words, nothing about OpenStack is built based on a specific vendor's roadmap. Therefore, if you are running a fork of OpenStack with patches, it is encouraged that you reach out to the OpenStack community and discuss your use case. This way you can figure out whether what you are doing is compatible with living inside OpenStack or how to achieve what it is you're looking to do correctly. Don't maintain OpenStack once deployed. Lastly, it's important to understand that OpenStack is a moving piece of technology. Therefore, it needs to be looked after and continuously upgraded. In other words, you can't deploy it once and then leave it there forever. We'll let you in on a little secret. 
This is how you set yourself up for a ticking time bomb. By doing that, you'll end up having to redeploy your entire cloud as you'll hit a point when it's too taxing to upgrade your infrastructure. Thankfully, the deployment tooling has now made it easier than ever to upgrade things on your own. Additionally, it helps with scoping enough time within your organization to enable continuous upgrades, which will be extremely impactful as you will always be able to run newer releases of OpenStack while avoiding massive multi-week efforts of upgrading your clouds from one release to another. What's more is that they only get better and easier the more often they happen. It's important to note that OpenStack remains a project that is API-driven Therefore, there is a chance that during upgrades, the APIs might see a change, resulting in breakage. Not to worry, though, as serious efforts have been implemented within OpenStack by the SDK team. Indeed, by using the OpenStack SDK, you don't have to worry about what version of OpenStack you're talking to, as it'll take care of all the abstractions regardless. Additionally, many OpenStack services implement micro-versions of their APIs, this helps ensure that even if the API has any changes, the specific microversion still returns an expected behavior for the user. In addition, behavior is never attempted to be altered without warning if it will change for at least one release. With regards to time, by upgrading often and on time, you will be able to catch these changes and address them in smaller chunks. Therefore, you won't have to make copious amounts of modifications. After all, if you make multiple upgrades at once, you may introduce many behavioral changes at once. Here at Vexhost, we have been helping customers with their upgrades for quite some time. Therefore, we have been able to conclude where the most significant challenges lie. Lack of experience within the teams can raise concerns during an upgrade as outages can be introduced and they can't be solved in a timely basis. You are so far behind in upgrades that the process involves upgrading across several eol releases and operating systems. Every single item mentioned previously, with time being the most frequent issue. So if you have an OpenStack cloud that you are looking to upgrade or want to get ahead to the latest code base, please reach out. We'd be more than happy to help you get there. Contact us today at vex.host contact.